Now, of all the amazing webinars we've done in the last year, the Secrets of Fashion Photography has by far been the most successful that we've done. We did one about a year ago. This is part two. This is Secrets of Fashion Photography, extreme locations. And what I mean by that is we're gonna be showcasing doing massive scale production. And I mean, I'm talking like on another level, $100,000 a day production with supermodels that have been from, that are in Vogue, Vanity Fair, Harper's Bazaar, shooting with insane sets on location with unbelievable styling um, and even exotic animals in extreme locations. Uh, we just had the opportunity to direct one of the most spectacular, over the top and largest scale and most expensive productions we've ever done in the history of the photography workshop series on location out in the deserts near Las Vegas. We shot on cracked earth and we photographed with these top supermodels that we flew in who been in Vogue and Vanity Fair and Harper's Bazaar. And it was incredible. These were all top like Russian supermodels all flown into Vegas. And we shot a unbelievable series of editorial stories. Now, what was really spectacular, you guys, is that in all the years I've been doing this, we've been directing these for the last 12 years, directed about 140 of these elite workshops. This is the first time that we had such an incredible production and we're able to even add a day five to the production. So we're actually shooting for five solid days. The photographers actually banded together. And thanks to some of you incredible photographers and your amazing generosity, such as Evan Siegel, uh, you were able to um, give an opportunity for the photographers to actually shoot a day five out on cracked earth with scaffolding out in the desert uh, near Las Vegas um, with these supermodels. And it was an experience that we will never forget. So I'm so excited and it was such a success uh, that we're really excited. We're gonna be offering this again next year in March of 2022 um, because this one was sold out and there was a waiting list. But what I wanted to get into guys are the secrets of fashion photography. Because a lot of times everybody wants to be a fashion photographer. Everybody has this dream of being Mario Testino or Annie Leibovitz or being able to photograph like Merton Marcus, be able to shoot for Versace be able to shoot for Vogue, Vanity Fair, Harper's Bazaar, or a campaign for Dolce Gabbana. And what are some of the secrets and the strategies that a lot of photographers are completely unaware of? And here's the challenge. A lot of you guys don't even know what you don't know. And I'm here to help kind of shed some light and give you guys some guidance of how to make the magic happen, how to produce something like this, how to be able to create a mind blowing fashion story that is evocative, that is impactful, that completely grips the audience, gets people excited and create content that will land you massive scale advertising campaigns for fashion brands and get published in major editorials. So today we're gonna to go in depth about all aspects of this vital, the, the vital secrets of fashion photography. Now, just to begin, I wanna to showcase to you guys just a little video of what we actually created. Something that is so over the top and I wanna show you guys so you get to see what all these amazing photographers uh, were able to experience. And the, here we go. So I'm gonna be showcasing here and I want you guys to take a look. This is just a little two minute clip that we put together real, just with some raw footage straight out of camera that we shot with an 8K camera and we were able to film with a gimbal um, in slow-mo at 120 frames a second. So we were able to shoot on location out in this cracked earth, unbelievable, unbelievable spot. We were also able to create content where we were able to construct this unbelievable set. We were able to create scaffolding out in the desert, which was <laughs> extremely challenging. We were able to shoot with these unbelievable models and be able to tell these stories where we are photographing and filming a sequential story within the desert. And as you can see in the background, there's dust storms, there are even these dust tornadoes. 
In fact, on the first day we got down there, uh, we went and actually started, we constructed the entire set of scaffolding and it was so windy, it was a 40 mile an hour winds that the models couldn't even get out of the RV. So you have to deal with some of these situations like going to location like this, finding a nearby spot that was also um, unbelievable and be able to bring in incredible exotic animals to create these epic fashion stories in a scene that is going to be impactful because what we're going for as a fashion photographer we're going for images that have impact we're going for images that are iconic and i can't stress that enough shooting content that is iconic is everything and what i mean by that is that very special iconic single image or video that showcases who you are and who your photographic fashion brand is. What makes it special? What makes it stand out? There's a reason that our Secrets to Fashion Photography um, part one had 13,000 views on YouTube. It's because a lot of photographers, they want to gain this edge. They want to know the knowledge and the secrets of how to take it to the next level. And as you can see, what we are shooting out there is over the top. Just the production scale alone is on another planet. And that's another aspect of one of the secrets of fashion photography is showcasing that you can shoot massive scale productions. You can shoot with these top models, showcasing that you have that ability, you have those skills, and you also have access to the production. Because a lot of clients, they're gonna be gauging you on a couple of really key and pivotal things that a lot of you guys are completely unaware of. A lot of photographers, and including fashion photographers, believe that they're going to be judged, engaged, and booked based upon their photography. Well, it's not just about your photographic skills. It's really not. It's not even about your lighting skills. It's really about a few important things, such as who's in your images. Are they recognizable faces? Are you shooting with celebrities? Are you shooting with supermodels? Where, you know, if you're shooting with top models, what publications have they been in? The images in the video we just showed you, those models had been in Vogue, Vanity Fair, Harper's Bazaar. They are top tier European and Russian supermodels that have been in some of the biggest magazines and the biggest campaigns. Because they're recognizable faces, that adds so much gravitas to your portfolio, so much oomph. And that's what we're going for. We're having something that's highly impactful and also recognizable. And you can have celebrities, even better but creating content that has recognizable iconic faces is so huge, even more important than the photography itself. Okay, so that's absolutely key. Another facet, of course, is having a production quality that's so over the top. I mean, when you look at that production quality, it is insane to be able to shoot with that level of content. It is absolutely over the top and ridiculous. And that is what we want to showcase to our clients. We want to showcase production quality. One of the things if you also notice is we shot with multiple models. A lot of times, you know, if somebody's just shooting like a small fashion editorial or say shooting a fashion, uh, say a portfolio, like a model, model portfolio, model test, which a lot of fashion photographers start off doing, which is fine. But the challenge with that is if you're just shooting model tests, then you have a portfolio of model tests, meaning that you're just going to have a single model in, a, in an image. Now, if you're going to do that and you're going to start off at the bottom doing model tests for modeling agencies, make sure that you're not shooting for the model and you're not shooting for the agency. And I know it sounds counterintuitive because you're like, well, you know, I talked to Ford Models and Ford Models wanted me to, you know, to shoot this, this new face that they have and they wanted me to shoot something amazing for their book. And it's like, okay, yeah, that's all fine and fine and great. But the thing is, is that's not going to make you any real money. It's really not. What is gonna make you money is telling a fashion story. So even when I started out and I was you know, about 19 when I started doing like fashion tests on portfolio shoots for models, what I would do is I would showcase my own editorial story. So I wasn't really shooting for the model or for the modeling agency, I was shooting for myself. And it's the same thing when shooting for an editorial. You're not really shooting for the magazine because the magazines these days, they don't pay anything. There's no budget, you know? So really what it comes down to is you need to tell a story for yourself. What's going to benefit you and your brand? So when you can showcase an image like this, and now this is an example of a single model, what a story. 
with impact. Now, this model happens to be Valena Potober, who is a supermodel and has been in Harper's Bazaar. I mean, she's a major, major top model. And then we added some impact. We added this unbelievable horse that has so much added value to the story because it showcases production value. The location, um, the monochromatic feel, the dress, the, you know, every facet of this, from the styling, the hair, the makeup, the wardrobe, all the different facets, they tell a story. And that's what we want to create. We want to create high-end production value that's going to tell a story. Super important. So I want to make sure that when you guys are creating these images, whether they're for portfolio, for editorial, they need to tell a story and it needs to be about you and your own personal brand. Because if it's not, you're missing it. You're missing the boat. It's got to be about you. Because when we're showcasing, say the goal is to shoot for Dolce Gabbana or the goal is to shoot for Vogue magazine, we need to make sure that our content and that our editorial portfolio, our, our fashion portfolio is going to be just absolutely impactful that on a tour at Vogue is going to look at it and be like, all right, now, I, yeah, I love this. I love this. You know, you'd be perfect to shoot for our September issue. That's what we want you, you know, that's the kind of impact. That's the kind of level because you're going to be competing against the top fashion photographers in the world. So you got to make sure that your brand is high end. That's actually one of the big reasons why we direct these epic experiences and these unbelievable workshops, just like you saw, because we're creating content that you can use to raise the profile of your brand, whether you're a fashion photographer, even a consumer photographer. And then especially if you're a lifestyle and advertising photographer, it's absolutely critical to do that. So I want you guys to think about, okay, if I'm going to develop my brand, what are my goals in fashion? You know, do you want to be a full-time fashion photographer or do you just want some iconic images that can maybe supplement your other photographic brands? And that's okay too. Totally fine. But I want you guys to think about it. I want you to also think about, okay, if it is to shoot for Vogue or shoot for Dolce Gabbana, for instance, what do we need to get there? And a fashion portfolio, a fashion video reel, like I just showed you, that's going to help get you there because that's content at the same level that Vogue is hiring for right now. But it, it's not, you know, it's not free. You also got to think about, okay, we do need to foot a budget because like, as you just saw, that's about a hundred thousand dollar a day production. You know, we had five production vehicles, including two full size, 30 foot long RVs. Um, we had U-Hauls, we had production equipment. Um, I had like six production assistants on set. We've got hairstyles, makeup styles, wardrobe styles. We have animal trainers. We've got animals. We've got all these different facets from the catering to the equipment to the lighting, all these different important facets. It's extremely important, you guys, to make sure that we're going to have all the details in line and that the production is going to be world class because it's very obvious when you've got a world class production with top models and top production level that you have high-end content that's going to wow the pants off of a client. It's going to make them so excited. It's going to completely be like, oh my gosh, all right, now you're a hot photographer. I want to hire you. That's the perception that we want. But it also, you know, it's, it's not free. So I want you guys to also, I'm going to be um, asking some polls. And at the end of this whole webinar, I'm going to be asking some surveys from you guys. And I really encourage you guys to answer it. Um, I also want to make sure that you're telling us, okay, you know, what are you going to do? to develop your photographic career. What does that look like? You know, do you want to develop your, do you need to develop your portfolio? Like coming to this Las Vegas experience and shooting the greatest fashion images of your lifetime? Is it develop your video reel? Like the video I just showed you and creating content that is going to just wow and dazzle the clients. Is that what you need? Do you need to have the connections, the network? Because really, you know, when it comes down to it, we need the uh, the faces in our portfolio, we need the production quality, we need this unbelievable content, but it also comes down to who you know. So do you need to meet people? Do you need to meet decision makers? And what does that look like? Right? What, what does that look like? All right. So I want you guys to tell me, and I, I also want you to think about, okay, if I need something for my portfolio, what is that? And maybe getting involved in an experience like we just did in Las Vegas, you know, might add some value to your brand. So I just um, asked a poll here, um, which of these photographic workshops would you be interested in attending that might add value to your career? 
what would that look like? You know, would you want to come and shoot, you know, supermodels on a cracked earth desert in Las Vegas? Would you want to go and shoot at a castle in France, a 13th century castle that I actually just bought? Um, it's a 49 room, 40,000 square foot castle in Masia and um, You know, what would that look like to you? Do you want to go and shoot something epic in Chicago? Do you want to shoot it epic fashion editorial? And by the way, this is actually um, something that we shot a couple of years ago at our Chicago workshop, telling a story like this. We shot this um, at the Palmer House Ballroom. Unbelievable location with these top models. And we shot this night at the ballroom story. Would something like this add value to your brand? Something like this is also pretty sophisticated in the way we lit it because we're shooting this with, this is about a 30 second exposure, creating this unbelievable content, um, but dragging the shutter and then capturing that moment. So this is another secret of fashion photography, you guys, because it's photography, it's not video. We can get away with things like that. You can get away with shooting a 30 second exposure because it's so dim in this room, you're shooting with candlelight, which you know is maybe about 1900 degrees Kelvin, meaning that the light is very dim and it's very red appearing. Um, and you have all these chandeliers, but how do we capture that background and then also capture that unbelievable model so sharp, razor sharp and perfect. So we're gonna show you actually, and in Chicago, we're gonna be doing some unbelievable vintage fashion stories. Um, and you know, by the way, you know, all these workshops have been completely sold out. We've had waiting lists, especially like Newport Beach with, um, uh, with New York, with uh, what we just did in Las Vegas. Um, there are, I think, two spots left in Chicago. If anybody does wanna come, we are um, starting this uh, in about two weeks. It's gonna be June 15th through 18th and it's gonna be an unbelievable fashion story. But shooting something like this, where we're dragging the shutter for 30 seconds, and then because, remember, the strobes are not being affected, uh, are, are not affecting the ambient light. The ambient light is this beautiful candlelight. The strobes are only affecting um, the model itself that are being strobed. So that's affecting the model and the intensity on the model. So the model is almost standing in the darkness because it's so dark in this room. So for a 30 second exposure, we get the beautiful ambiance of the background and, the, and the, um, the amazing chandeliers, but then we're strobing the model to make her razor sharp. That's just kind of a little bit of a secret of some fashion lighting. And of course, I also love to use beauty dishes. That's probably my favorite form of fashion lighting is utilizing a beauty dish just because beauty dishes have this unbelievable look to them. They just kind of have a, a crisp, beautiful feel. There's another image we shot from that story and it just kind of has a subtlety to it. Um, but you know, incorporating lighting that just gives this just subtle touch. I absolutely love it. And telling a story because as you can see, it's contemplative. The model is thinking about something and that's what we're trying to get. We're trying to evoke an emotion out of the model. Right. And if the models, you know, sometimes when we're doing all these Russian supermodels, <laughs> they're not always the most cooperative. They're not always uh, the easiest people to deal with because, you know, they've got egos and they're a challenge. Absolutely. So we need to make sure that it's your responsibility as a photographer to be able to, you know, to coach them, to guide them, to be able to, to be like, all right, um, as a, you know, as, as a director, on set, it's your responsibility as the photographer to create the moments, okay? And to coach the model into those scenes. It's extremely important. And I think that a lot of times photographers, they think that it's just about taking pictures, but it's not. You gotta be a director. That's what I want you to be. I want you to direct a scene. So a few secrets and strategies are, when I'm shooting fashion, uh, first of all, I love to, um, kind of build a relationship with the model. So early in the day, the model shows up at 8.30 in the morning and, um, I, you know, and I make sure that I'm gonna be you know, showering them with whatever they need. You know, they show up on set, they've never met anybody there typically. Um, so I'm gonna build a relationship. I'm gonna talk to them. I'm gonna get to know them. I'm gonna find out a little bit about them and show some interest. So they feel like you know, there's some sort of connection and they're not just there as just a pretty face, but I actually care and I do because I wanna get, you know, get to know them, but I also wanna get the most out of them. So like, this is an example. This is what we shot at the New York Fashion Photography Workshop, which we have coming up in September of, um, of this year. 
Um, and um, I think this one's been sold out for a long time, but one spot just opened up. Um, but this one is unbelievable. And we shot with a supermodel PB Jean who's been in Vogue um, and uh, we, she an unbelievable top model. Um, but getting to know her, talking to her, getting to know like her perspectives and finding some kind of you know mutual interests can really add some value and can really help when you know getting to build a rapport with model. Then you know they're going to be in styling. You know you got to budget your time, guys, because they're going to be in styling from say 8:30 a.m. till about 12 noon. That is not uncommon for about three to three and a half hours of styling. That's makeup, hair, wardrobe. And especially when we're shooting with multiple models, like in this sequence, I think we had four or five top fashion models. Um, you know, it takes a while. It takes a while for the stylist to get through it and to get you know the, the girls all ready to go. But when we're there and we have them all ready, I'm making sure. Well, first of all, I'm also like making sure they get the coffees, or the, the teas, or whatever special thing that they want. Any special requests or foods? Making sure that they eat as well, because a lot of these models are you know going to be like, no, no, no. I you know I want to shoot before I eat because you know they're worried about how they they're seen. No, like I really kind of another secret is I really want to make sure the models eat because it typically isn't going to affect them physically. It's you're not going to actually see it or notice it when you're shooting them, but it does affect their um, their their emotional state. It affects their energy. It gives them more of a you know an oomph when they're they're out there modeling. It makes them more energetic, and that's what I'm going for. So oftentimes I might do one scene before lunch, and that's okay. But I do make sure that we break and make sure the models eat. Then. We're going to art direct a scene. And like a sequence like this, it's complex. You know, we have this unbelievable location. We've got these incredible faces. Um, but kind of a secret is, is, all right, let's get some movement. And in this scene, for instance, the one on the top left with uh, the girl in black, you know, I had her physically walking and strutting almost like she'd do right on the catwalk. And I love that. It's hard to capture. And you also need it because you also don't want it to look like you're, you know, a runway photographer. You don't want to do that. But I really love that strut. I really love that extension of the leg. And by the way, I believe this image is from Hans J. Paul, who is on this webinar right now. He's amazing. And, um, you know, he did an incredible job. But an image like this, I got the model into a movement, into a sequence, and I photographed the scene with her then looking slightly off camera. If you notice, the model's never really looking directly at camera. They might be looking in the direction of the camera, but not at camera when we're shooting fashion. I generally almost always do this. I guess as soon as I look at camera, it's a different type of story. And a lot of times, uh, it doesn't really correlate with a lot of fashion and advertising. Looking into cameras often a little bit more of a portraiture thing. So I want to make sure that we're not doing that. We're doing something that's high end. So we're looking kind of slightly off camera. And if you notice, the eyes are always either looking away or off camera. But also making sure the model's facing into the light. Because the light, this is, this is one of the biggest challenges that my photographers deal with, is not having the model's face directed into the light. But making sure that you're always having them. And if the light is typically, when you're shooting fashion, another secret is we're typically shooting the, with the lighting, whether it's strobes, whether it's an eight by eight foot bounce, which is one of my favorite lights, which is essentially just a giant piece of silver that bounces light back, or whether we're shooting with direct sunlight, we always want them, it from approximately a 45 degree angle most of the time. So it's 45 degree angle coming in, hitting the model's face and giving this beautiful, intense light and also creating some beautiful shadow because I, want, I do want shadow. Shadow is amazing. I think that that's really, really important. So making sure that we're going to have some shadow is something that's really, really important to, to essentially um, have like shape. We want to have shape to the, um, you know, to the face. And when we're adding um, shadow that by having a, a light from a 45 degree angle, hitting highlights here, shadow here, it then creates some beautiful shape to the face. And I think that's really, really important to do because it's going to make the image stronger. It's going to tell more of a story. I absolutely love that. Really, really important to do. All right, guys, now make sure in the Q&A, please ask some questions because we want to hear from you guys. We want to hear some pressing questions if you have any questions about fashion photography because we're here to help you guys. We're here to guide you. And I also want to make sure that um, you guys also answer the poll that if, you know, maybe about half of you have so far, those of you who have not. Um, let me know which of these photographic experiences, you know, you just take a look at what we did in New York. You took a look at what we did in Chicago. 
we took a look at what we just did in Las Vegas to give you a little bit of an idea. These are all some of our fashion, epic editorial photographic workshops. And we also have an epic experience at our elite masterclass, which is the end of the year. We have it coming up in October. This is something shot at our elite masterclass with Anna Vostrakova, who also we flew in for this Las Vegas workshop, which was incredible. Um, this is what we shot in New York. Um, but, um, you know, the, uh, the October of masterclass, um, it's our most elite and over the top production that we do per year. It's, this was also shot at the masterclass. This is an award-winning image um, that uh, won the number one fashion photographer of the year award from Adam Friedman had won that from shooting that image. This is another epic fashion image from David Gesprek, who's on this webinar right now, um, who attended the New York experience. And he also was just with us um, in um, Miami Beach. He was also with us in Chicago. He was also with us um, at the Colorado workshop. We we're up at Breckenridge shooting at 11,000 feet in the mountains. So um, and guys, we offer these experiences on fashion, on swim, on lifestyle, but specifically today, the secrets of fashion. I wanna make sure that you guys master this because you can see these images that are on the screen like this one right now, this has impact. This image is iconic. This is an image that would, you know, in this one as well, it drops that, you know, it's one of those, you just drop the mic. It's one of those images that just, you know, these are the type of images that we're going for. It's iconic. Creating iconic images is everything. And I want you to fill your portfolio, which We've had a lot of photographic reps come on and give their perspectives. And a lot of times they'll tell us that a photographic portfolio, a professional portfolio is gonna have about 40 cohesive images in it. I think that's a great rule of thumb. So if you guys can have 40 cohesive images in your portfolio, I'd love for you to have at least 20 that are iconic. And I mean like unbelievable iconic images that just blow away a client that when they see it, they're just like, oh my gosh, uh, I, I'm just floored. I don't even know what to say, it's so good. It's just so absolutely epic and iconic. This is an example of an iconic image, okay? Just completely, you know, unbelievable production. All right, now um, I, I've got some great questions. Now, uh, Rakesh Malik says, um, uh, okay, um, that's okay. Final touches, last clicks, or whatever term you want to use. I don't know what you're referring to, uh, Rakesh. Um, but yeah, when we're getting ready for a, um, uh, a fashion shoot, we want to make sure that right before we do this shoot, so like we, we, the models are all styled, they go out on production, um, and they're right on set, and we lit everything, we're ready to go. And then we've got last look or final touches, which is essentially um, the, the makeup artists, you know, might adjust the lipstick. They might, you know, touch up the face if you're getting a little shiny, you know, um, and then, uh, and then we shoot. And that's what Rakesh is referring to. Um, Greg Barzma asks, what's the best source for finding top end fashion models? Okay. That's a really, really good question. Um, Greg. So, uh, I recommend across the board guys, always, always, always book from a modeling agency. Okay. Now that's what modeling agencies are for. They're for representing the best models in the world, but also trust me, if you do not go directly to a modeling agency, you're going to have all kinds of problems, all kinds of, of, of issues. So for instance, you know, for many years, a lot of photographers uh, use something called model mayhem, um, which is like kind of like a, you know, a bunch of models of photographers join it and they, um, uh, they, they, they book a lot of TFP, trade for print kind of shoots and stuff. And they also book and pay models on there. But the thing is, is any model who's modeling on model mayhem is not a top professional. You know, they're not represented by a big agency. And there's usually a reason for that. They're usually maybe not the right height. You know, our typical models are going to be um, anywhere from 5'8 to 5'11, you know, top fashion models are more in the like 5'9, 5 5'10, 5 um, you know, 5'11 realm because they're these tall, giant um, Amazonian women. Um, and, uh, and then for men, for male models, it's usually between six feet and 6'2. Um, you don't really want any male models shorter than that, but that's, in the, and then if they get too tall, then it gets a little bit tough um, in some of the scenes, especially if the guys are with the girls, if they're too tall, it gets a little awkward. So that's generally the, the height that we're going for. And then also the sizes. You wanna cast models that are generally a size zero to two. Um, and, and that's really important. 
Now, of course, we've run into this a lot over the last year. Um, a lot of these models that are a size zero or a double zero, and I've even shot them before, and they're just unbelievable skinny girls. And then, you know, you go to book them, and their portfolios show that they're a size zero, and then they show up, and they're a size four or six <laughs> or, or even bigger. And that does happen. Um, where COVID has gotten to them, you know, or they, you know, they kind of let themselves go. And that does happen. So you also, it's really important to follow them on social media, check their Instagram, their social, and try to see video of them. That's really important. But still, I would recommend always going through an agency because it's a lot safer. Now in Los Angeles, um, you know, there's, there's dozens of agencies. I usually cast from about 15 of the top agencies, Ford, El um, Elite, Wilhelmina, Next, Vision, Bounty, um, we go to, um, uh, there's uh, IT, there's, um, there's brand, which is a little bit more lifestyle. Uh, we have new models. Um, we have, um, uh, there was Hollywood Model Management. They've sent, uh, since changed their name um, to uh, Meraki. There's, um, uh, you know, L there's all kinds of amazing um, agencies in LA. Um, I also love um, Source. I love uh, working with, um, uh, Dragonfly, there's a lot of great agencies in LA that I've worked with over the years, and I built relationships with them, which is really important. So my, my best suggestion for you, Greg, um, is start building relationships with modeling agencies, meaning that, you know, get your unbelievable portfolio together. And if it's not there yet, then I would take a workshop because we've got the best models in the world, um, you know, at these workshops. And then I would make sure to then approach them um, approach the modeling agencies and tell them, hey, you know, I, I really, um, I'd love to, to meet up. I'd love to touch base. I'd love to talk with you about, you know, shooting with your, with your models um, and start to build a relationship with them. I think that's really, really important. Um, I think that um, um, if, uh, if you don't, and it's just you come in cold and they've never heard of you, um, then it's a little bit harder. Right, but since I've been in the industry a long time and I'm a known brand, I've developed my photographic fashion brand at a really high level. Um, when I go to these agencies, the agencies know who I am. They're like, "Oh, it's Kevin Michael Schmitz." Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Well, I know that if I, you know, if he books models from me, then you know it's going to get published every time. I know that you know because he's been publishing over 200 editorials. I know that if I book with Kevin Michael Schmitz, like he's going to take care of my models. My models are going to be happy. He's going to make sure they have this, they have the best catering. They're going to be picked up. They're going to be, you know, in Vegas, I flew them all in and put them up in luxury suites at the Venetian in Vegas. And um, I took care of them. So the models were happy. Um, so the agents know that they can trust me because I built rapport with them. That's really important. But if it's a new agent, we've got to now start fresh. So what I would do, Greg, is I would also, um, I put together kind of a form template email of what I would say to a modeling agent based upon what I'm booking them for. If it's an ad campaign, it's one thing. If it's editorial, it's another. If it's a portfolio shoot, it's another. And I'm going to pitch them um, with this specific template email. And I'll send that to, you know, 15, 20 modeling agencies at a time. And then based upon that, uh, the agencies will then send you their, um, their casting sheets. So then they're like, oh, okay, um, you know, uh, these are the models that are available. And, um, uh, and uh, you know, based upon your project, your parameters and your budget, these are the models available for the shoot um, and go ahead and select from them. Go ahead, here you go. And then they'll send those my way. And then I get to select, you know, okay, I really love, um, you know, Valena Potrober. Uh, she is perfect, absolutely perfect. Oh, let's go with Anna Vostrakova. You know, that, that sounds amazing. And you can look through the portfolio and then browse and look at like, oh, okay, you know, what are their sizes? Um, what are their looks? Kind of tracking, um, okay, what are they going to, um, uh, you know, what are they going to look like in certain conditions also? So, you know, in a portfolio for fashion is very different than lifestyle, very different from swim. So depending on what I'm casting, I'm going to cast specific agencies that handle those specific models, you know? So like in Miami Beach, it was very different. We worked with Elite, we worked with Next, we worked with CGM, and they were giving me these top models that are really into lifestyle, meaning like happy, fun, healthy, having fun, have, enjoying life, and then models that were really great at swim, you know, the whole sexy swim thing. So that's what we're going for um, when we're dealing with different, you know, different modeling agencies for different types of shoots. All very, very important. Um, but I would reach out to the agencies and that's how I would approach them. Um, and then based upon, you know, uh, who they send over, then I make my top selects. Um, and then the next step is kind of the next secret is I don't always immediately um, book them all, right? 
I want to be like, well, you know, I've got these options from these other agencies. Um, maybe I want to book Valena and Anna, but I'm not ready to book, um, you know, uh, Vlasa or Ginger yet. And that way, like, I'm going to then, you know, kind of bide my time. So what I'll do is be like, all right, I'm going to confirm these two girls and I'll put these other three girls on hold, meaning a first hold. So uh, that way, like, basically, I have the first say to, uh, you know, kind of um, the refer first right of refusal. So I can, I, I have them claimed, but they're not finalized, but the other girls are. And then based upon my other confirmations, the other agencies, um, I'd be like, all right, well, these are and going to end up being the best of the best. So I'm going to just let's, let's hold and let's, let's book Vlasa and then let's, you know, let, um, you know, Ginger go, that kind of thing. That happens all the time. And to give you an idea of what that looks like, you guys, this is an actual casting sheet. This was sent from, um, the, uh, um, from, from one of the agencies that I work with. And, um, and it gives you a, um, a look to see like who these girls are. You know, for instance, this is Valena. So, you know, she's five, nine, um, she's got her, um, you know, here are her sizes. This is her portfolio, you know? So now I'm like, all right, so this is, this is Valena. And, you know, we can browse through her, her book, you know, her portfolio, and we can see her look, feel, and style to get to know like, all right, you know, is this one of the models I want to work with? Right. So this was, you know, a live casting sheet from what we just did um, at the Las Vegas workshop is they, they sent me these options. Um, and then I selected a bunch of models um, from the, from the agencies. Right. So, um, you know, oh, okay. You know, she has a cover on Harper's Bizarre Beauty. Perfect. You know, this would be one that I'm more likely to book. So I booked her and actually I had Belena there for four days and it was unbelievable. I mean, she was an absolute superstar. So if that answers your question, um, I think that, um, that way, you know, gives you kind of an insight about my process. I'm looking at angles. I'm looking at bone structure, face, height, sizes, all the little details. And, and of course, you never know, you know, like, like we booked a girl um, at, at this last uh, workshop in Vegas named Vlasa, who is an absolute stunning model, unbelievable bone structure and gorgeous. We booked this girl, but she shows up and her hair was purple. You know, <laughs> couldn't predict that. I didn't know she was going to have purple hair. So, um, you know, the agency normally would tell you, but for some reason they didn't. Um, and sometimes that could be a big problem, obviously. Um, I think for what we were doing, it, it actually, it worked out okay because we were working with a lot of color, but generally for a lot of fashion shoots, I obviously wouldn't, wouldn't uh, want purple hair, but in this case, actually it did work out. Uh, but you know, this is another one of the girls we booked, right? So just to give you guys kind of an idea, um, you know, we, uh, um, we booked Alejandra, you know, five foot 10, stunning model. And, uh, you know, I'm like, all right, I just saw her book. Oh, okay. You know, she's also been in Harper's Bazaar. Um, you know, she's a top girl, um, great bone structure, kind of exotic looking, kind of fierce. And, um, you know, so she was great. She was great. So this is kind of the process that I go through. Right. Um, and we have all these unbelievable models, you know, Anna Vostrakova, Ginger, we booked these two girls as well. We also booked Sveta, who uh, has been in Elle magazine. You know, she's a top, top girl. So, um, you know, this was another one. Uh, that, um, you know, she was, I think she was with us for four of the days and she was unbelievable. Um, but, uh, you know, but definitely, you know, she, she's a, a top model. So she's sometimes a little bit harder to deal with um, when they're these top Russian models, because they, they are, um, you know, they know that they're stunning and they're top models. So that can be sometimes a challenge. Um, but uh, when you work with those top models, it's hard not to photograph an unbelievable image. So as you can see with these workshops, we only work with the best of the best of the best. Um, this, is, this is really what it comes down to because now you have a body of work, a portfolio that is so elite because you just work with the best models in the world. You know, that's, that's huge. That's absolutely huge. And that's a real secret of fashion photography is to kind of pull out a portfolio that's at that level, that's that epic. It's super important, super important to have. And to showcase that, so the photographers that are attending, you know, they get to they get to have models that have been in L and Vogue and Harper's Bazaar, and and not just one model, but but multiple models. I mean, we shot with you know what like nine different models, you know, uh, last week in Vegas. It was it was unbelievable. It was absolutely crazy, crazy, unbelievable. Um, all right, guys. Now um, I'm also gonna put on another poll here. How likely would you be? to enroll in one of these elite workshops. If you guys were wanting to take your photographic portfolio and your career to the next level, how likely would you guys do it? Now, I know a bunch of you guys on here are past attendees and stuff, and that's okay, that's, oh, that's awesome. 
Um, but, uh, you know, and I know you know the value of these experiences because we are the most elite photographic workshop series in the world, bar none. Nothing even remotely comes close. And we've been that way for 12 years now. We create bodies of work. We create productions that are dreamlike, that are absolutely on another level. And that, I think, is extremely important um, just for clients to, you know, to understand, to see, that are just going to, you're just going to baffle them. You're going to wow them. You're going to create something that's so over the top that they're going to be enchanted. And that's what I want from you. I think that's really, really, really important is to create something that is that epic that your clients see that iconic image and you're just like, all right, you know, I'm ready to book you. I'm ready to book um, Crystal Bear because her work is so epic. You know, I am completely floored and I am dazzled by what she's going to create. I mean, it is so elite, so epic because she just worked with these supermodels, you know, and, you know, and you just, it's hard for a lot of people to match that, you know, when you're working with people with models at that level, you know, when you're working with talent that have been on the cover of Vogue, Harper's Bazaar and Elle um, and Vanity Fair, that's a big deal. You know, when you, when you work with talent like this, it puts you on another planet. We also uh, worked with a little bit of diversity. Um, we had some different ethnic um, looks as well um, from being like we had the Latina look, we had the Russian look, we also even had the Asian look um, with Alice and she became, you know, a total star as well. I mean, she was unbelievable as well. And I think that also can add some value, especially in this day and age, um, to add a little bit of, you know, some different looks and different ethnicities uh, in, into the story. Super important. Um, okay, so uh, Michael Kluke, you asked, what are, um, what are typical rates for models in LA, New York, Chicago, including agency fee and minimum booking? Um, great question, Michael. Um, now, it is all about usage, because you also said you realize usage is important. But if you want to shoot something for your portfolio and has limited usage, realize buyouts and global rights and significantly add significantly to the cost. Um, yeah, so I mean, these, these kind of models, um, you know, they're, they're going to be anywhere from, you know, typically... A couple thousand to 10,000 a day um, is going to be kind of the range. Um, so, you know, they're, they're top models. The other thing too, Michael, is that these are the kind of models that they don't just work with anybody. You know, they're not going to just let any photographer, even with a sizable budget, just work with Belena. She's a top girl, you know, because they also have to protect their brand and protect their brand as a model. So you have to be really aware of this. Um, that, uh, you know, you're, um, uh, you're going to be gauged and judged based upon, you know, your content and who you are, what your name represents. So Michael, you have to have an epic brand. You have to have an unbelievable portfolio. That's why the workshops are so vital. Um, and, uh, and, and that actually can bring down the cost of the model. So this is one of the great investments when say coming to one of our elite workshops, because now that you have content and you shot impactful images, the images that are so over the top with these supermodels, now it allows you to get the models, not only to book top models from other agencies, but also to be able to book models for a lower rate, because now you are seen as a world-class top photographer. And this is really important. And this is what a lot of people aren't even aware of, is that a lot of times what we're going to do is we're going to build your photographic um, brand, but also your photographic currency, which sometimes can be even more valuable than your actual physical monetary currency. Because in the fashion world, you know, they're, they're kind of funny about stuff. And you got to make sure that they feel like you are the top tier person that you are somebody that they want to work with. Because, you know, these models are working with some of the best photographers, most famous photographers in the world. So you got to make sure that, you know, you as a photographer are being perceived as such as well. Really, really important. Um, so remember, if you have a photographic currency with supermodels at that high level, um, you know, with images that are impactful, then you're gonna, it's going to open up all the doors and it'll allow you to actually, it'll, it'll save you money in the long run because now it's actually going to cost less to, um, to book models and uh, to, um, you know, to essentially uh, take it to the next level. So, um, all right. So now, guys, uh, I'm also going to be, I, 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 I put on a poll here. I'd really love for you guys to answer this. How likely, you know, 10 being absolutely, I'm ready to enroll in one of these epic workshops. And, you know, and one being like, no, not interested at all, which um, is fine, but 
surprising. Um, but uh, let us know. Let us know. We're very curious about that. Um, I also wanted to let you guys know that, you know, we've worked with all these amazing photographers and we're going to have some of them on as panelists here um, to talk about their experiences. Um, but I want them, I want you guys to know that we coach photographers and we actually offer coaching free of charge um, with professional photographic consultants. Um, you know, Daniel Rothschild, um, he's an unbelievable professional photographic consultant that actually helps and strategizes with photographers to help guide them and take them to the next level. Priscilla Evans is also a world-class photographic consultant and personally my production coordinator that actually produces and helps actually make all of this magic happen, um, as you guys could see. And, um, you know, she's the one that's kind of behind some of this magic um, and the great Priscilla Evans is also somebody you could coordinate with and actually get on um, a Zoom call for free and, um, and actually do a um, personal one-on-one -on -one branding photographic consult. If you want to go over your photographic portfolio, if you want to go over your brand identity, if you want to go over how to maximize fashion, um, you know, Priscilla spearheaded um, a lot of the production on this. And as you can see, I mean, it's completely over the top. It's on another level. So if you want to speak with the great Daniel Rothschild or Priscilla Evans, um, we can coordinate um, these uh, free photographic consults with you guys that we're offering this week um, and uh, next week uh, as well. The following week, we're going to be in Chicago, our entire team from Dan Rothschild to Priscilla Evans to myself. We're going to be actually out on location directing that epic Chicago experience. Um, but go ahead and click in the link in the chat and make sure to set up your dedicated photographic session um, with a professional consultant. And that way you guys can have your one-on-one -on -one time. Um, if you've already done one in the past, that's okay too. Um, we can go over something fresh, something new, because there's always so much to go over. Um, but I encourage you guys to do that. It's really, really important. And to see where you're at, what you need to achieve and how we're going to get you there. Because that's really, really important. I want to make sure that you guys are um, achieving at the highest level of your potential. So, and as you can see, this is all uh, production coordinated by Priscilla Evans. So she'd be actually one of the people you can personally talk with. And you can see how incredible this is with these supermodels and with these animals from camels to, to horses. We even had a rearing horse, kind of like a whippers on stallion. Um, we shot with owls, we shot with falcons, we shot with hawks. Um, it was unbelievable. All right, guys. Um, so um, please, you know, uh, complete the um, the uh, poll, and then also I'd love for you guys to schedule a consult as well. All right. Um, now um, I would love to bring on, um, and, you know, and also answer some more questions if you guys have them. But I would love to bring on some of our amazing uh, panelists. Now I see that um, uh, there's been some great questions, um, and I think we answered a lot of them based on models um, from Greg uh, as well as from um, Whitney. Um, uh, we had some great questions here, um, as well as uh, Michael. Uh, so thanks, guys. Those are all really great questions. Um, this is one of the, the beauties. I mean, instead of spending two to ten thousand dollars per model, having five models on a set over the course of five days, um, that adds up. You know, you're talking tens and tens and tens of thousands, even can be even hundreds of thousands of dollars. That's the beauty of one of these epic workshops: is that you actually just show up, and we've got it all there for you. And I use my connections, my relationships, my leverage to bring in the best models in the world. And we spare no expense on these productions. They are so elite, so over the top, they're on another level. So um, I'd love to bring on um, some of our great photographers and some that have actually um, just attended. Um, so uh, let's bring on um, the, uh, the great Crystal Bear. Um, Crystal, uh, you um, attended the Las Vegas experience, and I know you're signed up for a few of our upcoming experiences, which I'm really excited about with you, Crystal. Um, and, you know, and Crystal, what I want to tell you is not only were you an absolute joy to work with on set, uh -huh. um, you have a wonderful energy. You were incredible working with the models. Um, but what I really loved was your mastery of some of the video production. And this is something that I work personally with Crystal on, and I had her operating the 8K camera. We shot with an R5 um, on a gimbal, and Crystal was mastering that. And some of that footage 
uh, actually a lot of that footage that I just showed you was actually filmed by Crystal. So Crystal, I'd love to hear from you. And why don't you tell me about your experience, um, kind of what were your favorite scenes were, and, um, and, and also like about fashion, what you learned about shooting fashion, some kind of secrets that you learned while you were there with us in Las Vegas on the, um, in the Cracked Earth. Yeah, so um, one of the biggest things I learned was just how much goes into a workshop. I, uh, a workshop done properly, I should say. So um, it was amazing how many moving parts there were. And when, like Kevin mentioned before, when we showed up to on the, on the second day, I think it was, um, to the cracked earth, it was just unshootable completely. Um, Kevin, you use a word all the time and I forgot what it's called. <laughs> But um, it was just unsuitable. So we had a last minute kind of figure out where to where to shoot next. And um, like watching them work was really, really helpful. Um, it was a huge learning experience. Um, and then also, you know, how how they worked with the models and really took into account how the models felt. Um, a lot of times, you know, there's sometimes photographers who don't think about that, but it's so important if the model's not willing to actually, you know, do the work, you can't get the shots. So you have to be really aware of the feelings of the model. I mean, they're, they're human beings, they're people, they're doing a job. And uh, one day it was really, really cold. You wouldn't think it'd be cold in Las Vegas, but it was so cold because of the wind was crazy. And we really had to work very, very quickly. And um, it was just, it was pretty amazing. And even with that, we shot with animals and Priscilla, so Priscilla brought in animals. It was, it was epic, but there was just so many different moving parts. And I know a lot of people, I know of a lot of photographers who think they can put workshops on and you can, of course, but not to this level. And um, it's just, it was just an incredible experience. And I, you know, just watching them work so hard, everybody works so hard. You know, I tried to pitch in a little bit myself because I'm just that type of person, but it was, it was just an incredible experience. And I actually really wanted to jump in on Chicago, but I'm spending a week with my dad. So um, France can't come get here soon enough and neither can uh, um, New York and the mastermind. So I'm super excited. Excellent. Now tell me a little bit about your experience with video because I know you were new to this, um, but mm -hmm. Crystal, you, we just shot, saw this amazing video and you filmed a lot of that. Tell me about like what you learned with video and kind of how you feel like that's gonna benefit you and your career. Well, I've dabbled in video before, but I hadn't had the opportunity to really use gimbal. And it was, it was just so much fun. I will say that one of the hardest parts of video is um, directing. I, I'm actually really good at directing, but um, directing with everybody watching you and um, sometimes there's a lot of pressure there. So that was, that, that was definitely the, the hardest part. And I didn't, I didn't direct so much because to be honest, the models were doing so well by themselves. Um, but the gimbal was really intriguing. And I learned a lot about how they do the slow-mo. Um, which is really incredible. And I can't wait to actually use it because um, my current video that's on there is, you, it's very amateur looking. And so um, video is so very important. Um, I do, I think Priscilla Mel mentions in the chat, I, I do wedding photography and I've tried doing video with that and they, they came out fine, but that was it, fine. <laughs> so this is totally takes you to a different level. And it really teaches you, um, number one, if you can do it, because you do have to be uh, smooth, you have to be agile on your feet. Um, if you do want to do video, that's a super important aspect you need to have is agility. Um, and obviously the ability to direct, which if, if you're a good photographer, you should be able to direct anyway. Um, but that was the big thing, just learning learning about the aspects of actually the technical aspects of, of video, as well as um the directing aspects of it excellent excellent yeah and, and you did a great job of both you, you managed that gimbal really really well and it was smooth and you got some great content and also different sequences you know as you can see we went left to right right to left up and down in out follow 360 those are generally my favorite for fashion but i what i wanted to show you guys was um what crystal was talking about when we got there on day two and um, we, we had already had the, uh, the guys building the scaffolding since 6.30 in the morning. This is what it looked like. 
and we're out in cracked earth out in the middle of nowhere and it's hot and you know and crushing hot out in the middle of nowhere the winds bl you know blistering it was so intense the dust was just everywhere the dust the chalk uh, which also guys is a secret of fashion photography make sure to be mindful of your wardrobe because if you were able to go out and bring the you know we had probably 50 uh that day we probably had about fifty thousand dollars in wardrobe if you bring that wardrobe outside immediately it's destroyed immediately every single garment you have you can't return it won't go back to the showroom won't go back to the store you're done and it ruins everything so that's really important to realize because we got to think about all aspects from the fashions you know the wardrobe to the animals we had animals scheduled to be there animals can't even get out it would have it would have like been devastating to them we even had like um we had uh, this fifty thousand dollar owl this like exotic owl that was unbelievable um we had this um these uh, eagles we had um uh we had falcons and they couldn't they, they couldn't fly in 40 mile an hour winds i couldn't even believe that our, our guys that we had to construct the scaffolding were able to do it um, but we got there and we're like all right we need to we need to you know a shift so we found another location um, that was absolutely incredible. Um, but this, this kind of shows you guys a little bit of a behind the scenes of what, what it looks like, you know, when we show up. Um, and also here's a couple other images, but, um, uh, you know, Crystal got there and everybody's excited, but it's also like, well, you know, you got to deal with this. Um, and, uh, you know, and all the dust, which looks beautiful, uh, but aesthetically you've got to, you've got to deal with it because the models won't even get out of the vehicle, you know, because they're, they're like, concerned you know of their safety and stuff like that but it's absolutely beautiful location um and uh we are going to incorporate something like this next year in the march workshop we're going to do it in march instead of may so we have a little bit better weather um but uh excellent crystal was there a, a, a favorite scene of yours that just like wowed and dazzled you and got you really excited and you're just like oh my gosh like i just shot impactful images that blow my mind well there there was two um my first was the camel Mm. I loved that camel. I'd never seen a camel close like that. And to be honest, I don't really see that in a lot of, that's something that you see in a high end fashion magazine. That's not something that I've ever experienced before. So that was pretty amazing. And then the, the second one would be the last day with the scaffolding. Um, and I loved when, uh, I don't know if you showed these images when she was on the swing. That was one of my favorites when she was on the swing there. Um, cause I love whimsy. I love, I love that kind of feel fairy tale feel. Um, and that was, that was absolutely, it was fun watching them, watching, watching you guys put her up there too. Um, but that was, those are my two of my favorite scenes, um, by far. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. It was a challenge. And what she's referring to is because the, um, you know, the dresses didn't want to get them destroyed. Uh, we had to like physically uh, carry the models and then place them where they needed to be. Um, this is the camel. And by the way, the camel also, um, we tried to shoot the camel with two other models. Camel didn't like the models and the models didn't like the camel. So like it didn't work and they were like afraid of it. And there was this big, and it was freezing cold out. Um, and uh, the models were really uncomfortable. So um, we found the right model. And in this case, Elena could just master it. She had a good energy with animals and I've shot with her with animals many times. So I knew that she could handle it too. But um, yeah, that sounds, that sounds amazing. Yeah. She loved that camel loved her. I'm telling you wanted to go home with her. I'm thinking <laughs> <laughs> that camel could not get, a, get, get enough of her. It was so awesome. I love it. And Crystal, you're coming to these upcoming workshops. I know you had signed up for the France workshop. You had signed up for, um, you know, branding. You're coming to, what, what were the upcoming ones? You're going to be at a, a we're going to see you a ton. Yeah. So I just kind of went full force into this. Um, and New York is something um, I want, I'm going to do. And then, yeah, mastermind. And then next year, I, I'm, one of my big passions is I love to do, I want to get into travel lifestyle. Um, and so if you're, I, I think you might be doing some international stuff, so I'm definitely gonna, you know, drop in on that. So, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think that sounds, that sounds brilliant. I think that, um, uh, doing travel lifestyle is huge. And as you know, I mean, that's, that's my expertise because I, you know, I'm a TV travel host. Um, and, uh, I just, you know, found out that my new, that, uh, season, um, uh, the season one of Great Escapes actually re-airs now on CBS into syndication starting in September. And um, I'm really, really, really excited about that, guys. So I want you guys to tune in um, and, uh, and check that out. So, um, you know, travel is definitely my jam. And, um, I, you know, if you guys are interested in that, we also offer epic photographic workshops um, on travel. 
Uh, and, um, you know, we do travel resort, we do, um, you know, travel uh, as well as just like um, tra travel like landscape photography as well. So we do a lot of amazing, amazing stuff um, in the travel space. And, uh, and we do that because, you know, guys, we are, um, you know, we want to build your different brands. And I know everybody has a different brand. So whether it's fashion, uh, whether it's travel, um, whatever, we want to build that brand. And it's okay to have multiple brands. It's totally okay for that. Um, and that's something that, you know, Crystal, we're going to develop your different brands. You know, that's something that we've talked about. We're going to have all these different Crystal Bear brands that we can be proud of that we can be excited about and that we can showcase to clients to get them completely wowed and dazzled for the different um, uh, Crystal Bear brands. So I know we have an upcoming branding workshop, which we haven't mentioned yet, but I'm really excited about that. And guys, also, I want you to know that um, we also book some of the most epic panelists uh, that we've ever had at this workshop. So um, I just found out today, uh, we were able to book um, the great Crystal Wright who is, um, she is uh, really huge in the female empowerment space. Uh, Crystal is uh, one of my absolute favorite human beings that I have ever worked with and probably one of the best speakers um, that I've ever come in contact with. And she is an absolute expert in branding. Um, she is an, an absolute beast when it comes to it. Um, and she is gonna be joining us. She even, um, she was an agent who represented photographers and stylists for 15 years. Um, and she's actually the publisher of the Hair, Makeup, and Fashion Styling Guide. Um, and Crystal Wright will be one of our panelists um, at the workshop on branding coming up June 12th. Um, and she's an expert. And, and honestly, she is one of the most influential people in the beginning of my career. Because I first moved to Los Angeles when I was like 23. I didn't know anyone. And I hit the ground running. I started working with all of her amazing stylists from hair, makeup, and fashion stylists. I started shooting these editorials. I started building a relationship with her. She saw something in me because she saw my photographic abilities and currency. She started to work with me all the time and sent, and which is hard to do, hard to get a styling agent to send their top stylist to you. Um, but that's what I did. I, I hit the ground running here. I, I moved to the beach um, on the strand in Hermosa Beach, directly on the beach. And, um, and I hit the ground running to make sure that um, I was going to be constantly producing amazing content. And Crystal worked with me on that. Um, and also I was able to book huge advertising campaigns and book her stylists on them. So over the years I've, book, I've been booking her stylists. I've probably spent, um, you know, over um, $150,000 on stylists uh, that she represented um, uh, alone, just on the styling cost. So um, she's, uh, she has sent me some amazing people over the years, like uh, the creative director from L'Oreal, uh, Dorico Jackson, she represented Norm Black, one of the top hairstylists in LA. Um, you know, and Dorico, I, I, I've shot with now for 15 years and we've shot huge commercials, celebrities, you name it. Um, top fashion stylists. I've probably worked with at least 20 of her artists that she has worked with. So huge, important person. She's going to be on on June 12th. Um, she's going to be absolutely an incredible inspiration and I can't wait. She's an even better, much better speaker than I am. Then um, we also have uh, the great um, an amazing panelist, which some of you might have met at the Chicago workshop. Um, he's the, um, the owner of 10 Management in Chicago. Uh, so he represents the fashion industry, hair, makeup, uh, and fashion styles, and models. Um, and that's David Sanchez. So um, he is amazing. He is also one of my favorite people. So I'm really, really excited that he's going to grace us with his presence um, on June 12th. That's another one of our amazing panelists. Um, he's the owner of 10 Management, and he is incredible. Um, he is an expert in guiding. He also used to represent photographers, um, but guiding and developing photographic brands um, and in um, and, and your individual brand, he is an absolute expert at that. So he's going to be another one of our amazing panelists. So if you guys are not signed up now, I think we already have a huge group coming. I think we've already um, enrolled even more than we had in our marketing workshop uh, that we had a few months ago. Um, but our branding workshop, I think, is um, already at, I think, um, 27. Um, so it's doing extremely well. Um, and uh, we are letting a, uh, you know, a few more people in. If you guys have not enrolled um, in that one yet, uh, we are offering the opportunity to enroll um, uh, today with a $300 discount off of um, the enrollment if you guys enroll um, you know, now for this because this is kind of a last chance. Um, it's it's um, the workshops in like nine days, uh, but it's gonna be all on Zoom. 
It's going to be remote. It's normally $12.95. We're offering a $300 discount. So it ends up being only $9.95 um, for that. And the beautiful thing about it is that 100% of the enrollment of the Branding for Photographers workshop is a complete credit towards any four or five day epic photographic experience. So it essentially is free. If you guys end up, because everybody that does the branding workshop and the marketing workshop and the closing the deal workshop, uh, the vast majority of them all enroll in our four and five day workshops. If you guys do that, this is a full credit, counts 100% towards any of those workshops. So it ends up being essentially for free. So we wanna make sure that you guys have constant value and we have all the stuff that even we go in depth about all aspects of fashion photography but you know what we don't have all of the time to get in depth with that about branding for photographers so we're going to spend a six hour intensive just on branding on june 12th um, and also uh, we're going to be doing um, a closing the deal workshop on july 17th which is incredible and that's all about the sales side of photography, how to book more clients, how to make more money, how to actually close the deal as a photographer and book more jobs. So that's coming up um, on uh, July 17th and I'll be broadcasting that from my castle in France. So um, that will be pretty spectacular. Um, and uh, it's gonna be um, all about um, the sales side, closing the deal, which a lot of photographers miss. And that's something that is a, such a challenge because a lot of photographers struggle with, you know, they develop their portfolio. That's just part of it. Now we have to refine your brand. We have to develop your marketing. We have to get in front of the right people. And then after all of that, we then have to bid on campaigns or bid on projects with clients, whether it's a lookbook or, you know, wh whatever it is. And then we have to land the actual deal. And by the way, that will be broadcast um, from my uh, 49 room castle in France um, on July 17th. And um, that'll be epic. That's going to be on closing the deal. And that's something that um, I have a lot of experience with. I've been on a lot of campaigns. I've shot a lot of big campaigns, both photographic and commercial. Um, and I'll be bringing on a bunch of experts uh, on that as well to make sure that you guys master the sales side and closing the deal in your photography. So if you guys are interested in the Branding for Photographers workshop, developing your photographic brand, that's coming up June 12th, July 17th is closing the deal. Um, and then of course, in between is that epic Chicago fashion experience um, that we've been talking about that is absolutely mind blowing. It's gonna be an epic vintage fashion editorial, completely over the top. Um, so uh, guys, um, all right, so I want to um, uh, make sure you, if you guys are interested, click on that link in the chat. Um, and uh, also um, I, uh, I wanna bring on my next amazing panelist. So Rob Collins, um, now Rob, uh, this was your very first photographic workshop. And I'm excited because um, you, I, I feel like kicked butt at this workshop. I thought you did such an amazing job, Rob. Um, and I, uh, I want to hear from you, man. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your experience, what it was like to be at a big fashion set. What did you learn about the, kind of some of the secrets of fashion photography on set in Las Vegas um, on the cracked earth? Tell me about it, Rob. Well, the, the, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. So, I was amazed by the size and the scope of the production. It was such an amazing production. I mean, I've, I've been to workshops before, but nothing like this. It surpassed all of my expectations. I mean, expectations. This was just outstanding. I mean, I, I mean, I can't say enough about it that you, Priscilla and uh, Dan, and I can't say enough about Dan. You guys were just amazing out there. I loved it. Awesome, man. Was there, um, and tell me, like, what did you learn? Like, what was the, like, the, did you have any of those moments where you're just like, oh my gosh, like that's how you do it? Like, what, tell me about it. Tell me about your experience and, and what your experience was. I think um, as far as the learning part of it is watching you and listening to you uh, say how and where to place yourself for the shot. You know, you can get in front of a subject and just start snapping away, but to get the most epic shots, there's a certain angle that you should get, a certain way the model should look. And uh, when you mentioned at the model looking at the camera or looking off camera, that truly made a difference. It was just such an incredible opportunity to get such epic, uh, epic images. Definitely, definitely, yeah. Was there a certain scene that just kind of blew you away? You know, it was when we were shooting all the birds and we didn't uh, know what to expect next. It was just one thing right after the other, right after the other. It was just 
an unending just array of amazing one getting greater than the other. And I think that was probably my, my favorite part of it is just what was coming next. And it was always something more epic than the last. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah, this is something we shot in studio. Uh, mm -hmm. And this is, I think, on day three. And we shot with Belena and we had these amazing birds. And um, yeah, and that was totally different. So and what was that like? I mean, you learned some kind of studio techniques with lighting and also incorporating owls and birds and, and all this amazing stuff. Um, you know, was that something that kind of like, um, did you feel like you grew in as far as your lighting and storytelling? I did. In fact, um, the reason I missed day five is because I had clients scheduled, but I used that opportunity with these clients to try these different lighting techniques. And I got to say that um, it, it, I'm glad, I'm so glad I was at the workshop so that I can employ these new techniques. Um, but it was the lighting and the directing and how everything just comes together and you have a plan B in case plan A goes awry. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, and here's one where, I mean, we had this amazing mm -hmm. falconer come in and we had a uh, shot with Anna Vostrakova with this huge elegant dress in studio. Uh, unbelievable, unbelievable story. It was. Yeah, absolutely, Rob. Um, and uh, okay, cool, cool. Um, and as far as, um, you know, going forward, you know, you mentioned that you're incorporating some of the lighting skills. Did, did you use like, the cross lighting situation, the beauty dish. What was the what was the the strategy that you incorporated? Well, it had been a while since I shot with the beauty dish, and um, what I did was I, I broke out the beauty dish and I set that up, and I had the cross lighting set up, and um, it was just I just used this a few days ago, and and I mean it was just it was, it's just epic. It was it was wonderful. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, here's just a few images of Elena here but yeah absolutely i mean i'm i'm impressed uh at, at, you know it, at what we we're able to create in vegas just because the talent and and also you probably had never worked with supermodels like that before i take it no no i have not yeah okay and what was that like i mean what what did it feel like i mean be able to like walk on that dream set and like literally shoot with supermodels <laughs> <laughs> that right there in itself um was just over the top but even the better, even better than that was the models, they already know how to work. So there's not much direction you have to give them. You give them some to try to get the shots you want, but they know their angles, they know their looks. And it was just, just simple. It was, it was almost like no brainer. Yeah, take a look at this. This is actually one of Crystal's images that she had shot uh, with a rearing horse. I mean, it was insane. Mm -hmm. I think this right. was on uh, day two, day two of the workshop, you know? And as each day progresses, we generally get more and more intense, more and more epic, more and more mm -hmm. over the top. Um, and, uh, you know, and went from these just insane moments. I mean, even in this like amazing, like desert with mountains um, and uh, incredible images and great storytelling. But uh, that's awesome, Rob. Well, I, I really appreciate that. And I'm so glad you were there and I cannot wait to see you um, at the next workshops. It's gonna oh, be- Oh, you'll so definitely fun. see me at more workshops. Yes, definitely. Definitely. Excellent. Yeah. You can see how much value it is. It's just like, it's just, mm -hmm. it's, it's just so over the top. I think a lot of people, you know, they, they don't really realize the, the level and scale until they actually show up. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> the scale of it. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Rob. I appreciate it. And I can't wait to see you uh, coming up. Um, it's going to be amazing. So um, thank you. And, and, uh, and I know the, the upcoming, the branding workshops and all that is going to be over the top. You're going to love them. Um, all right, so uh, I'd love to bring on, um, uh, because we keep talking about these guys, I'd love to bring on the great Daniel Rothschild and hear from his perspective, because Dan, Dan's my right-hand man, and Dan is there helping, making sure all details of the production are completely over the top and elite, making sure that everything is perfect, making sure the photographers are taken care of, making sure that the models are taken care of, all the little details that I can't tell you how absolutely just imperative that is to have somebody like Dan there working with the production to make sure that it's smooth, make sure everybody is feeling good and great spirits and making sure all the little details are in order. And Dan, you're an expert at that. And you've come now to literally every single workshop I think that we've ever done. So, I mean, you know, coming to Chicago, to Newport, to 
uh, um, to uh, Los Angeles, the masterclass, to up in the mountains in Breckenridge, to um, uh, coming to um, the Las Vegas workshop, Miami Beach. I mean, it's incredible. Um, so Dan, talk to me about your perspective of what it's like in shooting in difficult and challenging locations like a cracked earth desert with wind. Um, and also, you know, what I, I would say is important for a photographer that's seeking a fashion career, what do they need? And, and how does like the, say for instance, the Las Vegas experience or the Chicago experience benefit them? Oh my gosh. Well, well, first of all, thanks for uh, having me uh, um, on the webinar. You know, um, I'll, I'll, touch, I'll touch on uh, what, you, what you spoke about briefly. Um, uh, I, we, we, we did Breckenridge in, at 11,000 feet uh, you know, barely any oxygen, snow in many places up to our waist on a frozen lakes, all that. I thought that was out of this world intense. And I've done a lot of things. I've traveled the jungles and I've, I've done crazy things all throughout my whole life, kind of Indiana Jones. But the Vegas workshop was, uh, it was mind blowing. And, and here's why. It it showed the re, the reality of how a big production can have all kinds of challenges, but also teaching and showing how to think on your feet, move rapidly when like say the weather and the dust and the, you know, and the, the sandstorms and the whirlwinds, uh, the uh, sand tornadoes, <laughs> where you see the wall of sand coming at you and you know you have about two minutes to get all the camera equipment inside and the people and everything, you know all those unexpected extremes, and then learning and experiencing how to handle it. It, it was powerful. Um, so it was challenging, but fantastic. Uh, and the results, the results were great. Um, so as far as uh, fashion photography, it's, a, it's not, in a real sense, it's not rocket science. You need a portfolio, like you've been mentioning, Kevin, and showing of world-class models, and the reason, I'll give you reasoning in just a second, fashions that are off the charts, locations, the art direction, so you, and, and the props, the animals, oh my gosh, incredible. But the reason is there's a lot, there's a lot of competition in the fashion world. And so you have to have a photo that as they're looking at a thousand photos that come across their desk, the art director, the marketing director, you know, whomever it is you're, you're communicating with, you have to stop them in their tracks and wow them. So it has to be these type of photos that you're talking about for them to go, whoa, who's this? Now, at the same time, you got to expect that if they love what they see, that doesn't mean they're going to call you that day or maybe ever. But if they keep seeing, if you keep sending to them these incredible photos like we create at the workshops, on a weekly basis to brand yourself in front of their face, all of a sudden, as the advertising agents, I always use Natalie in Miami, who you know, came and gave great presentation at, at the workshop, told us, she says, hey, you know, I may, it, it isn't that I don't like you or your, your work if I'm not responding, it's that I didn't need you that day. So what you need is you need the portfolio. You need the, you know, the, oh my gosh, photos that are mind blowing. And you have to always keep updating them. You can't just keep using the same ones for years. And um, then you also have to have a marketing plan. Uh, you have to have a, a brand that you can present. So it matches up your website with LinkedIn. You know, you have to be able to show you're a brand and then you have to know how to market and do it consistently. I want to kind of twist this subject for a minute, if it's okay. I want to share what I call the unknown behind the scenes list of <laughs> that so many photographers either don't know or they haven't experienced or, you know, like when photographers come to the workshop, they show up. It's, you know, they get to shoot and make the most incredible photos of their lifetime, but what they may not think about are all the details. So uh, they, the photographers who come, they see the, I call it the tip of the mountain, the diamond on top only. Looks, oh my gosh, like Rob was saying, oh my gosh, it was fantastic. All right, how'd we get there? <laughs> so there's many details 
you know, to organize and for months to make the end result of world-class photos, greatest photos you'll ever take in your entire life, the experience incredible, and not just one day, but four or five days, um, learning, art directing, lighting, settings, you know, much more. The list of details, I'm gonna just touch on it briefly. Locations, permits, weather, if you're outside, catering, and each person's in the whole group, models, photographers, the production crew, you know, per, the food necessities, allergies, this or that. So when you're doing the catering, um, models, the agencies. Now you can look at their profile, you can look at their Instagram. The agency is only gonna give you so much info versus when they show up, how do they look? and how do they behave when they arrive? Uh, fashion stylists, um, fashions, hairstylists, makeup stylists, work locations um, uh, for the stylists to work out of, uh, production crew and the quality production crew, insurance, um, cost versus profit to equal quality, uh, safety, first aid, um, shade, for the people that are out, say, in the desert, so they're safe. Um, beverages, and all day, every day, uh, comfort. Uh, the photographers, their personalities, creating a working group that works together well, so it's a great experience. Juggling all of this is all happening while producing and directing, all of that, and Getting and creating the greatest photos and videos that you have ever taken and done is, is, the, is the result from all of that work. So, you know, there's guiding, there's teaching, there's supporting, um, paying attention to all of this at all times. So that's just some, I'm just mentioning some of the behind the scenes that normally everyone doesn't see. Now, uh, with all that, I actually want to thank, I know it maybe sounds corny, but I, it's just, it's so real. It's a, I want to thank Kevin and Priscilla and the team um, for unconditional care, professionalism, commitment, and dedication to the photographers and to the photographic industry. Um, you rarely will find groups out there that give sincerely so much. So, this is what we do, and this is what it's all about. And I know that's a lot of info, but it's to kind of give a perspective. <laughs> so there, there you go. <laughs> well, Dan, I really appreciate that. And I, you touched on some extremely important secrets there that uh, I'm glad you mentioned because a lot of times photographers don't think about the RVs, the motorhomes, the shade, uh, making sure the food is there, the food is on time, the food is what everyone wants, all those little details. And I tell you what, there's so many times where I've been on shoots of other photographers, other productions and stuff, and they show up with like Subway sandwiches or they, show, or they don't have food at all. That's and right. the models are very upset with that, yeah. you know, and then yeah. you don't get as much out of them. So it's like, you want to make sure that they are taken care of and they're feel, feeling like you are just, just fawning over them, anything that possible. And you do such a good job of that, Dan, just making sure every little detail. But guys- I didn't even, I didn't even mention the uh, Starbucks coffees for them all. Oh yeah. I mean, I, I probably spent <laughs> on, on, on that workshop alone, I probably spent $500 just on Easily. Starbucks alone. Yeah, you know, yeah. just on yeah. making sure that the models and everybody on the team, the photographers, everybody is, um, has the, latte or whatever that they need you know it's it's but it's important because if they don't have it some of them get you know frustrated i mean but i can't tell you how important it is and there's a reason there's big cost to productions um they are expensive and i think that a lot of times that you know we're not aware of that so dan um tell us about tell me about because i know we have one coming up in chicago and chicago mm -hmm is an experience that you got to experience uh, as one of the first workshops that you came to with us when you joined our team uh, yep. last year. And, yeah. uh, you know, it was something that was extremely special. And those that attended 
by far shot the greatest images of the lifetime. Can you tell me a little bit about why Chicago is special doing that vintage fashion story and why it would be important for a photographer that's, you know, that, that is into fashion uh, to, to do that workshop, to be able to add that to their, their body of work? Absolutely. So, it, well, it was, it's one of my favorite uh, workshops. They're all uh, my favorite. I, I'm a Midwest boy. I'm, a, I'm from Missouri. I used to go to Chicago in the summertime all the time. And it's an incredible, probably the cleanest city and, and uh, happening city going. It's, it's really neat. But it's also the Midwest. The people are really great. For fashion, you were able to bring in models that were just incredible. The locations were incredible. The uh, equestrian center with the horses, it was in, in just beautiful. And all locally, uh, the locations were all close by, easy to work with. Uh, the automobiles, um, and then the, the 12,000 square foot home estate, you know, uh, in, in that area, the smallest piece of land is what, five acres, I think you have to have at the least uh, to have a home there. But the, if you see the fashions and the hairdos and the look, it's a different look than you see anywhere. Um, it's, it's modern, but it isn't. It's vintage, but it works now. So if you look at this and you have this in your portfolio, first of all, look at the models. The guy in the, in the Corvette, he, you've probably seen him everywhere. He's incredible and great. And the, the gal's incredible. But if you have this in your portfolio, it's a, it's a different look. It's a different look than Miami or California or New York. So it shows that you are versatile. You are able to photo all different types of fashion incredibly. So it really adds a powerful piece to your portfolio. So it's a really important workshop. And, um, and whether a person likes Chicago or not, or you know, that whole bit really doesn't matter. The style of the workshop is so different and so important because you have to have a diverse portfolio and you have to be able to, let's say you're going after a Midwest based company. Well, you want to be able to show them, you know, um, work that's different, that, that isn't New York, it isn't California, you know, so it, it's just a, it's a powerful tool. That's, that's my uh, take on it. And, and uh, the workshop itself, it, the whole experience is great. The, that equestrian center, an entire gigantic equestrian center for us to work in and do the drone work, the videos. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it was, yeah. It, yeah, it was magical. I mean, I, yeah. I loved it. It was, it was one of the coolest Chicago workshops. And we've done so many amazing ones over the years. We've shot at Polo Fields. We shot it you know, with these unbelievable vintage cars, we've done um, epic ballrooms. I mean, we've been doing the Chicago workshop for like 11 years now, um, and it's always been a huge success. Um, and this year, I think we only, we have like just two spots left. So if you guys do want yeah. to take those spots, it'd be well worth it. Um, and uh, yeah, but thank you so much, Andre, uh, or um, uh, Dan. I wanted to ask mm -hmm. you a question from Andre Fluellen. Um, mm -hmm. And he asks, how do we learn to do the behind the scenes? Do you have any suggestions for, uh, for Andre Fluellen, um, uh, Dan, uh, about oh. how, how to learn the behind the scenes aspects of this that we've been talking about? Well, okay. So I would suggest you take it on piece by piece. I would, um, you, you could get with us, um, ask about, I mean, because as I outlined, it is, a lot and it can be overwhelming. So start off with just um, get the outline of the different pieces. Like we just, uh, we can give you that outline like I just went over as an example. And then kind of take it off, I would say piece by piece, learn uh, and investigate. Okay, so how can I like just something simple, catering. Well, first of all, catering just can't be catering. It has to be fantastic food. And so, and it also has to be user friendly, you know, how do you, you know, and this is uh, both uh, Kevin and Priscilla are the masters at making that happen. Um, I just get to enjoy the food, <laughs> but uh, they make it happen every single time, no matter where, whether we're in the desert or down in Key Largo or in the snow, you know, up on a mountaintop. So 
but you just uh, you start re you can get the outline and then just start researching. Well, okay, what would it cost? You contact, you do a little bit of shopping, you start putting prices together of all these different things, and then you have to look at well, how do I create a quality situation in production, but also make a penny. You know, I mean, I've, it doesn't make sense to in, unless. Uh, you know, a billionaire and just do this for fun, which I don't know if anyone would choose this for fun, but, uh, you know, so, but either way, the point is, it's just researching. It's not really, again, I say rocket science, models. Uh, the models are, are a challenge because Kevin, you brought up a good point on that. And that is, you can have all the money you want to go buy and pay for the models, but you have, they're not going to just work for anybody. The top of the line ones, they have to be able to make sure they're working for a, a brand that is noteworthy. So, you know, you have to learn all those details. How do you make the connections? Well, you start calling, you start knocking on the doors, you start saying, hey, listen, I want to, you know, I want to, I want to be able to do this at, you know, talk to a, a modeling agency, you know, and get to know them, build relations. It's, it's a, it's a lot of the glue, the relations like you do so well, you know. <laughs> So I, I don't know if that's a, you know enough, but I, that's kind of the the basis of it. Um, I appreciate that, Dan. No, that's yeah. that's fantastic. Uh, well, thank you, Dan, and thanks for everything that you do because you're an absolute inspiration, and you are uh, you're, you're what helps make these magical experiences happen and give them such success. Um, now, I, I just want to also um, you thank know you. talk with you guys about um, some of the unbelievable production. Uh, when it all comes together, all the little details come together, that's when the magical moments happen. And here are some of these images of some of these magical moments that we shot. I think these are some of Crystal's images as well. Um, and just over the top. And these are the kind of images with impact. And I know Priscilla here, the great Priscilla Evans, she works personally with Crystal. Um, she coaches her and guides her. And Priscilla is our production coordinator here and makes, you know, helps make all this magic happen. Um, so Priscilla, talk to us about, um, you know, about some of these strategies, how you're able to even um, make some of this, this magic happen with this unbelievable camel, having these incredible animals, having these, um, you know, being able to produce these epic fashion shoots, incorporating the animals into the scenes, um, how to deal with the animals, because they can be super challenging. Um, and then also, um, you know, dealing with the difficult conditions that, that kind of come in. And so what are the secrets to that, Priscilla? I'd love to hear, um, you know, from your perspective, because you, you know, you deal with this stuff um, at the, at the utmost detail. Yeah, well, I had an amazing time coordinating Vegas. It was more like a show than a workshop and than a production. It was, it was so insane. It was massive. And um, you know, for someone as well, and, and like the, the uh, you know, different photographers we've had on today, I also like to, and I, I want to share with you why we even choose animals like that and what the point is of going so insane and so over the top with, with the choices. So for someone like Crystal, you know, she's a fabulous wedding photographer, but we're aiming, we're aiming higher, you know, she's shot 2K weddings and our goal is to take her to 15K for weddings and be able to you know, do anything beyond that as well. So you have to ask, well, what kind of client is that who's going to be booking a photographer, you know, for 15K at their wedding? And a lot of those, you know, you've got to put yourself in the space of those crazy exotic destination weddings. I'm talking Indian weddings, you know, when they bring in elephants. So for someone like Crystal, having a portfolio that showcases this now she's landed that client and now she appears, you know, like she's super um, experienced shooting camels and, you know, exotic horses and all sorts of crazy looking things. So that's why we choose exotic is to take you really quickly, like accelerate that portfolio. So it looks like you're experienced at a level that's going to land a totally different type of clientele. And sometimes it's even hard to imagine that those types of people are you know, out there, but they are you've just got to appear specific to them and like you're you're in their space so yeah i mean these animals were insane we did deal with some crazy weather conditions which is why we wanted to choose hardy animals like camels what's amazing with camels we actually shot with a, a um 
a big Bactrian camel back in, in Colorado in the snow. And this time it was windy and, you know, it was hot and, and dry on some days. It was cold and windy. These things are so tough and they're so, you know, with the right model who can be a little, a little strong with them to kind of settle them down. Because I do respond to that. They just look insane and so exotic. And it really does have like a almost an international flavor that I think it adds to any portfolio when you throw, you know, animals and locations like this in, in your book. So the, the camel was insane. The owls and the hawks. So I thought, you know, how I also like to ask, like, what's been done to death? You know, what's what's happened and what's what have we seen enough of in, you know, the fashion industry in, in terms of animals? And I think that, you know, the first one that comes to mind is kind of uh, like snakes, snakes and reptiles. You know, anyone can have a, a snake draped around their neck. Oh, it's, you know, now pose with it and, and they models get pretty comfortable pretty quick with you know, reptiles like that. But what haven't we seen? So, you know, how about huge exotic owls? And and uh, we actually, I found a, um, a falconer who had spent like $50,000 importing like a couple of Siberian owls, you know, this kind of level of insanity. So we lined them up and they, we used them for some of these, you know, amazing and like studio um, scenes. And, and that was, you know, difficult, but obviously the owners are really protective of them and they want to make sure that they appear comfortable. So even just like a beak open where it looks like they're hot and panting, which they're not, they're actually pretty comfortable when that's happening, but the owners want to be really careful about how that's portrayed and what, you know, it's showing about the way they care for their animals with regard to welfare. So, you know, we worked with them, kept them comfortable, but getting these things into the palazzo, wow, what a story. And this is one that I will definitely share for many years to come. So I told these people, and I always try to maintain really great communication with all of the animal people that I you know, bring on, what's going to happen so they're not too overwhelmed when they turn up and there's all these people and this crazy set. And I told them, you know, the Palazzo, obviously they know we're shooting there. We've got you know, permission to do all of this stuff in the studio, but I haven't warned every single security guard on, you know, who's on duty at that moment that they turn up, that these things are going to be coming in. So I said, dress, you know, just dress subtle and, uh, you know, do whatever you need to do. We'll come down with the carts. We'll have all this, you know, ready to go and we'll, we'll be there to help you. So I was ready to get them in and I had our tickets for our rooms. So they could park easily or have the valet parking for free. And of course, they get out of these vehicles and what clothing do you think they have on? Well, they've got their t-shirts with wildlife, pest control, and they're in their big uniforms and there's these three guys and it looks like, you know, something's going down in, in the hotel and there's some kind of like rodent outbreak or something crazy that's happening. So of course, like, you know, I look at them and I'm thinking, okay, this is it's going to attract a little bit of attention. There's only about a million security cameras with everyone watching us walk in with these things. So I had a plan, you know, we had it logistically kind of covered and I had about, cause we were shooting with these huge dresses. I actually pulled extra dresses from one of our um, like boutiques and one of the designers I was, I was working with. Um, I actually pulled extra dresses just to cover the owls and the, all these insane cages. So I had them down there. So all of the valet guys are looking at me with these 10 wedding dresses thinking what the heck is going on. So I had them to cover them up and they didn't utter a sound. So in we go, we walk through the entire casino into one of the lifts and, you know, there are a few looks, but they'd seen us coming in and out with gear all day. So it, it worked really well. And they, they got up there and we surprised the photographers with this, you know, amazing addition to, to something in studio with these hawks and, and there were, I think three or four hawks um, and this gorgeous, enormous owl. So, you know, that was amazing and such a crazy story. But, you know, these people are, they're great to work with. They want to have the best images of their animals out there. And, and it adds so much value and quality. And I think that any decision maker looking at a book with an animal like that, or, you know, something exotic, it's going to be something that really makes you stick in their mind. And Dan often talks about this, the psychology behind every aspect of you know, the branding, marketing, and also the sales process, which is what we're going into with our, our business workshops. But there is a psychology behind being front of mind. And these animals are directly in line with that. I, I choose and I literally cast horses, you know, around what's going to make people stop and really think, wow, how can I incorporate their own brand or Yeah, that's an incredible shot. Absolutely amazing. 
that owl was just gorgeous. So for me, I just want to get the most insane animals. I'm always open to ideas. If anyone has some crazy kind of animal that they want to shoot with, I know that at the uh, the water studio that we were at for the masterclass last year, they'd actually shot with sharks in that, and they trained the sharks in the water studio to respond and and swim on cue. So you know, for me, it's all about like, how can we add a type of value and a type of quality to the production that's going to be totally unsurpassed and put you at a level just beyond any other photographer out there. Wow, that is so absolutely incredible, Priscilla. I'm, I'm amazed and wowed by what you're able to accomplish. And I also, you know, your strategies, not only coaching photographers and guiding them, but also um, with managing animals, managing, um, producing for fashion. You're an expert in all of this as a production coordinator and a photographic yeah. consultant. I would love for you guys to, um, you know, those who are watching, if you guys want to set up a specific, um, you know, branding consult with Priscilla or with Dan, um, I really uh, recommend that you guys go ahead and um, click on the link that we, we have in the, um, in the chat and make sure that you guys set up your special console. If you haven't done it already, make sure you do that because Priscilla and Dan are both absolute experts. Um, and I think that, you know, they're here to help guide you. So um, Priscilla, what do you think, you know, when with, I, say, I should say with producing a fashion shoot at this level, how does that add other than just the impact of the animals, but when you're shooting something, how, why is that important to have something that's so over the top and so iconic? Why is that important for a photographer to have in their portfolio, the kind of images that you shoot at our workshops? Yeah, I mean, it takes you to a new level. If you're wanting to break into high five figure, six figure ad campaigns, and that's a kind of jump. A lot of people look at the trajectory of their careers and they go, well, I'm shooting 2K wedding now. I'd like to shoot a 3K wedding next year. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. But we can take you so much further, so much faster. And it's just about rebranding re and revamping, you know, the facade and the feel and how you're showcasing what you do. So, you know, for me, I get really excited. I, I love working with all our photographers, but I get really excited by any that are like, I want to do a totally new, you know, face to my brand. I want it to look different. I want to kind of cull whatever content I've got and just put something fresh on there rather than the, you know, I'd like to replace this image and that one, but I'm kind of attached to this one. So, you know, for me, as far as what's in your portfolio and, and, and what you're showcasing on the front of your website, you know, this kind of content, it sets a bar so high that you can't have it. You really can't mix it with older content unless it's like at the same level with supermodels and crazy production value. And I also like to like look at an image and almost work out how many, like objectively, like how many dollars went into creating that image? How much value are you bringing to the table? How much quality, you know, what's the quality of that image and what does it reflect about you as a photographer? So for, for me, you know, creating an entire brand around content like that. And I've been doing some image reviews with some of the photographers already from, from Vegas. And when you've got five, six images from the one scene that are just insane, I mean, we've got content there for social for websites for portfolios we've got enough to keep it fresh for a long time because we can rotate through different images so yeah that gets me super excited the video real content i mean it's insane you can market yourself and, and achieve whatever goal at whatever level you want that to be um, i'm also in the process as well of reaching out to some of the relationships that, that we have with different magazines and they're international as well as national so um, you know, for some of those as well. And we, we include that as a part of the workshop, reaching out and seeing just how far and wide this kind of content can be distributed and what it can reflect and about you and your brand, but how it can build it to something really, really special really quickly. Well, excellent, Priscilla. I mean, you're an absolute inspiration to our photographers and I'm really grateful that, you know, you're involved because you just add more value and you create more and more incredible productions, more and more incredible opportunities for our photographers to shoot. As you can see, I mean, th this kind of stuff with these owls, I mean, this is just ridiculous. It's on another level. Um, and then these are all the unretouched straight out of camera images um, and just insane, you know, but even to get the owl to spread its wings like that, um, it, it was incredible. And because we did this, um, you know, we had some essential thematic images that we shot throughout the process 
um, of this. So it wasn't just with birds, but we also, because we had birds, you know, we wanted to do some, you know, we wanted to emulate some of that with um, an actual bird um, scene uh, where the, we turned the model into a bird where we did this outside uh, and we had this unbelievable gold special piece from an incredible designer, you know, who just created this this insane outfit and the, in fact the model one of the models was so jealous that the other model had it that she like Svetlana insisted that she actually wear this in addition um to Valena because usually just one model will wear one outfit um but she wanted it as well so she put it on and just rocked it so we actually had two two different models that actually wore this thing because it was so incredible um but images like this iconic you know outfits like this one of a kind that literally there is only one of these in the world. So really unique and, and amazing to have in your portfolio. Um, and I'm really proud of our photographers of what they created, how spectacular the production was, the models that they have in their book now it literally catapulted them to the next level. And it, at all levels, whether you're a world-class top fashion photographer or advertising photographer, or whether you're a consumer photographer, whether you're even beginning, it doesn't really matter. We can work with you to take you to the next level. And I think that that's what this is all about. Um, and guys, I also, I put a poll up. I want you guys to also let us know, we're, we're thinking about some of our upcoming workshops. You know, we've typically traditionally done the Elite Masterclass in Los Angeles. Um, Newport Beach is lifestyle advertising. Um, we've done San Diego before on lifestyle. Uh, we have, we've done Dallas where we shot with airplanes, C-130s, 1940s fighter jets. Uh, we've done Chicago for many years and is unbelievable. We've got our Miami Beach workshop, the Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Models and Lifestyle Resort. Um, we've done New York um, on high fashion. We have Atlanta that we've done on lifestyle and fashion. But we're actually thinking about um, kind of doing a specialty workshop in a new city, one that you know maybe we don't do very often or one that we've never done before. So um, let me know in the poll, I actually have you guys, um, I listed out some cities. Let me know what's interesting to you. And if you guys are like legitimately like, wow, I could totally you know come to this workshop if it was in DC or if it was in San Francisco, let me know because we can actually make something like that happen. Um, we do these epic experiences for you and we generally have them in cities where there are production services. Um, Vegas actually did have some production services, but we generally flew everything in from LA. So we brought in all the top LA people. Um, but, uh, but generally we have them in these very specific cities, um, but we are willing to offer something new and special this year. In addition um, to what we're gonna be doing at the Epic French Castle as well. So let me know. We're also gonna be putting out a survey after this whole webinar is over. And, um, and I'd really encourage you guys to answer that, the survey questions, I'd really appreciate it. Um, and it really helps us on our end. Um, and, and I really appreciate you guys attending these amazing um, webinars because they are really um, valuable as far as all the knowledge and, and what you guys can gain and some of the secret strategies. So hopefully you guys can pick up some of the strategies from myself, as well as my team, as well as the photographers that actually attended these amazing experiences. So um, I am so excited. I'm so grateful that you guys were on and this was essentially part two of the secrets of fashion photography, extreme locations, how to handle extreme locations, shooting with exotic animals, shooting with top supermodels, and creating the most in incredible, impactful images of your career. So thanks so much, guys, and I cannot wait to see you at the next one.